Tell me, dearie, oh, what can your senses be? Will you come and look out yonder window? Look at that further shore. Roll, roll, roll me on the water. Rock, rock, rock me on up the riverside. Roll, roll, roll me on the water. Rock me on up into the shore. I can sense a horse and I can sense a rider Walking along and they're down beneath the tall trees I can sense a horse and I can sense a rider Walking along the levee way Roll, roll, roll me on the water Rock, rock, rock me on up the riverside Roll, roll, roll me on the water Rock me on up into the shore Listen and tell me, oh, do you hear that train a coming? Well, that's the sound of a passenger railway train. Listen and tell me, oh, do you hear that whistle blowing? Well, that's the sound of a lonesome engineer.
life? Would she rest his arms and be his tender maid? But he was an aging salt and a rapeseed dog, an underground man in a hollow block. Could he understand her pleasant ways? She liked cooking fish cakes in his galley, save a skeleton for the cat in the alley. She showed a temperance toward the fate of her apron strings. She helped him drink his wine and returned a fable chime. There's a song or two he could hear, she knew how to sing. Was she better for tying them out or letting the blues come on in? And oh, for freedom in the morning. Was there something in her smile that tricked her? Was the very best way to begin? She could rest the pain from his heart without warning. If the moon was a girl, she was a flitter. She courted the accustomed jest with desire, and her best was on the wall. They wrote the name of Barbiella. Barbiella tied her hair with yellow ribbons. Said if the moon was a fool, she was a flitter. She courted the accustomed jest with desire, and her best was on the wall. They wrote the name of Barbiella. Children that Moses led, you 
John Karen's. Blood, sweat, and tears there. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to start with uh, the educational history from the first time you picked up a guitar and went to a lesson. Well, um, my dad played guitar when I was a little kid. He used to sing like John Denver and Three Dog Night and things like that. And then uh, when we were teenagers, my brother got a guitar. And he's younger than me, but he got a guitar first. And so uh, I got jealous of that, and I had to have a guitar. So it was about 17 I got my first guitar. Okay. So um, lessons were taken in like a uh, half hour or hour intervals? Not very many lessons at all. Oh. I didn't stick with it. If I was in school, I was uh, taking lessons. Those went pretty well if I had a weekly kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, mostly I, I started to prosper in my music abilities, I think, when I was able to start writing lyrics. And I could start trying to make words out of the sounds I was able to pull out the guitar. And I just tried to improve either one or the other. And it, it kind of went hand in hand that way. So um, the self-taught road <clears throat> is, is, is from books and practice. Yeah. But it's um, it's a different it's a different road than lessons or school, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of discipline in school that uh, once you get the the hang of it, then it can be it's like very rhythmic and mm -hmm. a melody can come out of that. But um, I always have to find an odd time of day to play or to practice or you know things. So it's nice when I have a routine though when right. I can do it regularly. Right, and then writing, and how far into how far into uh, learning and playing does writing or creating come, or how how far into it did that come for you? Well, sometimes I'm writing so quickly that I, the only playing I do on the guitar that day is just to get the music out for the whatever particular song I have written that most recently. So I'll write a song; it'll take a day or two. And then it'll take a day or two to come up with the music. And uh, I'll either sit down and learn that song and put it to my repertoire, or I'll just move on. Uh -huh. uh, I still have the music and the, the lyrics and, you know, print copies and a computer, on a computer, just kind of storing it all away. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like playing the open stages so I can get my material out there. That's a good Right, thing. right. So um, from learning till writing was about how many years? Maybe. Couple, just about just two. two. Okay, just about two years. And Seventeen. I started writing at nineteen. Okay, so now you're writing all the time. Yeah. Writing, um, <clears throat> writing, like, in, on the scale of how complicated, in the world of the of this music, how complicated are the things that you write? Well, I started I mean, with the very simple call and response. Like uh, you repeat, you have sing a line, repeat a line, and then you have the third line, mm -hmm. and the chorus and the verse can both be formed like that, and uh, one would be repeated and the other not, and I did that for a number of songs, and then like couplets, like two rhyming lines, mm -hmm. and then a quatrains, which like a, a sort of a backbeat, every mm -hmm. you know, four lines with each uh, every other line rhyming, so. Uh, they have their names. Mm. So I've done each one of those forms in a number of ways. Or like four rhyming lines, just four lines that rhyme. Mm -hmm. That's a nice way to go. Wow. Lots of things rhyme with the word see. Yeah. Or the, you know, the, the, uh, the word see, I see you. Yeah. I have a good day. I've got a lot of rhymes with day. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. So it's, um, <clears throat> is it, is it the, a process of transcribing the way a, the way a pianist does is it always writing notes down or are they just is it just getting just getting the strumming down in your head do you have to write things down or I have to write the chords down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to write the key down mm -hmm. I mean if I have enough chords in there I will be able to tell what key it's in right I'll kind of well, eliminate the factors to be able to tell right but uh I um I'm able to remember the chords and sing and like uh, pluck pluck the chords 
pluck more than one note at the same time while I'm singing. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, then I'm able to come up with a melody during the exposition and the right. solo. Right. Right. So how do you how do you compare what you create to the well known, um, you know, Joan Baez, Peter Paul and Mary, Bob Dylan genre that you've seen played and that we've done together? I haven't I haven't um, told many stories about people that are modern. Mm -hmm. I might have a, a cast, a not like a type cast, not a stereotype. I try not to write like a stereotype. But I might, um, like a calling, I might try to like picture a calling for a clown or a... Um, even a sheriff or a, a hobo or something, I might try to, what would, what would call them to be a hobo? I might uh -huh. try to describe that. But it seems a lot of Bob Dylan, he's got Cecil B. DeMille and T.S. Eliot and William Shakespeare and uh, Einstein. He's got lots of modern characters. I don't usually, I don't mention very many modern, but I, I, I tend to keep writing, so uh -huh. I might come into that. Um, there's a lot of talk, especially with popular music, um, and well-known songs about the variation of arrangements with these songs. Do I, I think I would have to work with an arranger to get it, um, maybe to be able to describe it to the rest of the band, mm -hmm. and also as well to get it on uh, vinyl or on CD. Right. To get it out there like that in a mass market, I, I'd have to work with an arranger. I've, I've tried to score music before with a lot to do, I mean, the little quarter notes, eighth notes, and um, I don't do very well with that, so, but uh, I can kind of hold my own, I guess, I hope. So you can do that arranging that makes the arrangements the way we know them, or you have to work with somebody else? You call, you, you call this person an arranger? I, I haven't done it yet, okay. so... But I think that I would learn very quickly, and I would probably begin to tar start to take on some of those responsibilities uh -huh. myself. Oh, okay. But it'd be good to have that kind of person, and it'd be worthwhile, I think, okay. to sh share writing credits for somebody. Okay. I don't know how much we'd go into that. Uh, it seems like, um, I, don't, I can't quite tell what is the, 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 the zeitgeist of music these days, what, make, what gives it its quality. It seems like we have certain gifts, we, we're given talents, and then we're supposed to put out some sort of a, a quality or somehow that we have, and it's not always the same as the generation seem, mm -hmm. seem to change, and yet we're full characters most of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, the open mics you started about when? About 20 years ago. Okay. Um, how was how was it as a launch as a way to launch you into maybe where you've arrived to today? Well, I think that the tradition is there. It's it's not a very well paid road. Yeah. But I mean, I think most of these musicians that I've met, I uh, I'm not gonna find their record in the store necessarily. But I bet they're still playing, and I bet they've been playing this. Whole, a lot of them have been playing this whole time. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, and I, I, I hear, I just hear good things. People respect musicians like that that right. keep plugging away and do do benefits and summer shows and, and get to a festival out somewhere around the state somewhere. And especially writing their own original work. Yeah. Definitely. It can be very personal. Even in reaching out to the audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you played any benefits? Well, one time I was in New York City and they were going to close Tompkins Square Park. So they had a bunch of uh, people from the squats and the lower village were in the park trying to protest them closing the park. And they said, Why don't you get up on stage? And there were no amplifiers or monitors or anything. I think the, there was like Somebody was making hot dogs and there was free coffee. Uh -huh. and that was about it. That was the benefit. And so I got up on stage and I sang a song. Oh, great. Great. What time of year was it? April. April. That's nice enough. <laughs> <laughs> nice enough for New York, I suppose. 
So, um, so now you're doing approximately how many open mics a month? I'm living in a, in a group in a mound. I'm unable to uh, reach anywhere except for one or two places there that I might I might get out twice a month. Okay. But uh, otherwise, I'm I'm mostly writing at home and mm -hmm. doing a lot of editing. I uh, I used to think that my songs once I when I wrote them they were perfect and they could not be changed because I had my own opinion on them and, and now I'm trying to sort of make them more. Uh, singable by uh, more people than just myself, right. and I'm ending up having to do some changes. Not on the, not on the the story itself, but just the shape of the words and how okay. I'm able to convey the message. So I'm doing a lot of that this winter. It's kind of humbling in a way because that's a lot of things I thought were so perfect. And they're still there. It's the same story. I did the same message, but uh, it's um, it's changing a little. Uh huh. So. Um so, when you when you say editing, you're editing your, your drafts. Writing, you're editing the drafts that you come up with, right? I can relate to that definitely. Um, what what about recording? What um, what have you done, and what are your objectives with recording? Um, right now, I'm working with uh, somebody in the city, trying to record a song or two, uh, trying to get. It. Just a, a small demo tape would be good to, mm -hmm. to get to some of the bars and restaurants who have the, the type of stages for music and to give them this demo and see if they would uh, have me perform there. So I'm trying to come up with one of those. 